Cube. News and analysis from Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Actian, Accelerating Big Data 2.0, and WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is The Cube. We're here live at Santa Clara and the Hilton. We're right across the street from the Strata Conference, which is going on at the Santa Clara Convention Center. And there's a ton of startups over there. We're in Silicon Valley. It's the, the heartland of, of startups, sort of the innovation that's occurring across the street and here throughout the, the week. And we've got a special segment right now with one of the hotter startups in Silicon Valley, a company called CrowdChat. We've got two founders, the CEO and the, the CTO, John Furrier, CEO of, of CrowdChat, and Danny Ryan, the CTO. This is a company that really is, is, is looking at the confluence of some major trends, big data, analytics, social media, which we talked about is just exploding right now, bringing them together uh, to really help people connect. So gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE, it's great to see you. Thank you. So John, you've been really focused on CrowdChat for the last year or so, um, uh, of course, spending time on theCUBE also, but so why don't we just start at the beginning. What is CrowdChat and why did you guys found the company? So Danny and I started CrowdChat, uh, as you know, Dave, a couple of years ago. We looked at social data. We saw people gathering around ideas and knowledge. And you know, we always say it uh, here inside the Cube, you know, expressing uh, big ideas to grow and enabling conversations. And one of the things that we saw was the social media world was growing significantly, like we saw parallels in the web. So you know, I've been looking for the, that web moment for many, many years, and and this is it. I mean, you're seeing conversations open and public and transparent, unfiltered as the new content. And, and that's like a, the web in the early days. And the social media marketplace for marketers and for people, it's really growing up and there's, there's, there's a need for tooling and automation and abstraction away of the complexities of doing stuff to one, generate conversations, finding people. So CrowdChat was the beginning of a data science project that we started a couple of years ago around using algorithms and proprietary technology that we built that Danny and the team engineered around identifying affinities and finding people of interest that aren't yet your friends, that might become your friends that you might want to have conversations with. That became an amazing, exciting project. We called it VFinder, CrowdSpots, other things. And when we showed people in our alpha beta stage, people were blown away. The number one question we got was, how do you use that information? And so we then built CrowdChat Platform, which is an application, very similar to TweetChat, but it works on all social networks, centered around the hashtag. So the, the real momentum around TweetChat has really generated this idea of people forming groups to, to talk amongst themselves in a very targeted, unfiltered way, which is essentially crowdsourcing content development, engagement, sharing ideas, and ultimately doing something, taking action of some sort. So that's really the crux of the, the vision behind it. Uh, we're passionate about the democratization of media, uh, opening up voices for in, any individual in the world to share their opinion, run it by people in groups, have that iterate and be crowdsourced and create new content and ultimately meeting new people. So Danny, you, uh, you were at Cloudera, you, you were at Georgia Tech, um, you, you came out, you were at Riot Games for quite some time. Um, you left Riot Games uh, to go found CrowdChat uh, with John. What, what drew you to Silicon Valley, because you moved up from Southern California? What drew you to this area and to CrowdChat? Yeah. Silicon Valley yeah, dry, like, dry, drives like a lot of like innovation here as we speak, but nevertheless, Silicon Beach is equally innovative and it was like a lot of fun. Um, you could just imagine it's a gaming company and like fresh talent and you play games for with, within the company just, just to test your product, which is really good. It, it was all great and League of Legends is really, really, really good game and it has the best engagement model I have ever seen. So people, people get, play that game for multiple hours, not just multiple hours stretching over a day. And there's a lot of big data and everything involved. And it was all fun. But at the same time, I, I, uh, we, myself and John, we met at Cloudera when I was uh, there in the office. And John was having his first, silica, first uh, small hub right there right, for the silicon angle. And we, we were brainstorming this idea on like how to use uh, data for the benefit of finding other people, like kind of like connecting uh, the humanity. Uh, and that idea was great. And then slowly, uh, then we have stumbled upon this idea. All right, everyone is using hashtags. It's not just Twitter. 
it's over Facebook, it's over Instagram, it's over uh, Tumblr. And this hashtag is a very important signal or like sort of a proxy for sort of a group communication. So every time this group communication and communication in general has to be reinvented as we, the humans make progress, right? Right from the age of like paper where the knowledge was in like the brains. People like put it in writing and there was an explosion. And today you can see like everyone has this small stuff which is like capable of doing so much, so many more things than just like pushing updates to Facebook. Yeah, this like concept that. of the hashtag is interesting. I mean, every yeah. TV show yeah. you watch, they got a hashtag yeah. on it, right? And yeah. Super Bowl has the hashtag. That's right. So right now, I think there is a conference going right across the street, and if I want to join into real conversation, a media-rich conversation, um, and to actually meet people who are not my friends, who are not, and to have one-to-one -one or one-to-many conversation, uh, who are not my followers on Twitter. Uh, it's very difficult for me to find them right now. I mean, I can use the hashtag, but Twitter is right now a river of uh, river of updates, along with a lot of spam and stuff. And it's it's not very easy for me to actually go and jump into one-to-one -one conversation. And also, Twitter has been like working, and like Facebook has been working to like improve the public communication a bit. But it's a very hard problem, and we are pretty much focused on that problem. We are we are just focused on. Uh, group communication for the internet, for the new age. It is like taking the IRC 20 years back, which is still like used by geeks, to actually make everyday social media user to use it. So John, let's talk about the product, um, sort of the high level, and then I want to get into the sort of secret sauce, Danny, with you. So, so John, well, so it's a real product. You can go to crowdchat.net and you can see it. But so why don't you describe it a little bit? Well, we'll give a demo uh, shortly, but you know, I think ultimately, what you know, people ask us, you know, you know, what is it, and and where are we as, as the business right now? It's seed funded, and we have some angel investors. We still kind of have an open series seed round, uh, looking to fill out, and we're being patient. We, you know, we don't really need the money right now. Uh, we're very capital efficient. Uh, we will be doing a Series A VC round in a few months. We'll be going out and talking to some large scale VCs, but we have significant traction around large groups of people. And the core product, Dave, under the hood, is about one thing. We've built a system that's now shipped and scaling a large scale group communication chat system. We have public chats, we also have private chats, but ultimately it's large scale. So we've tested it against volumes uh, on the Twitter sphere, for instance, against this NFL data all year and the Super Bowl and the playoffs. No problems, full back end scaling. We are looking for a UX developer, and we think we're, we're still working on that. The product is in public beta preview one. We expect it to be in beta preview two shortly. We're adding rich user experiences to it. But ultimately, you go to the website, crowdchat.net, and you just create a chat. Um, people can get an invite. If they request an invite, we can approve them. If they have a community, we're targeting community managers, and those managers can use this tool. And right now, the early adopters, the core audience, is folks who have communities and want to engage crowdsource town hall meeting, crowdsource a, a webinar-like experience, crowdsource a conversation, or to do a one-hour timed content jam, as we call it. And it's very, very effective because it generates real content real fast. So the product is working great. We've had great testimonials from folks. Merv Adrian at Gardner loved it. He had some great positive quotes there. Really, really positive feedback, great traction. We're doubling down on that. And under the hood, full cloud scale. It's on Amazon, um, originally on Hadoop and HBase. We ported it to Amazon to scale up. And we're super excited. Again, the core users are mostly in the B2B space. We're starting to look at more topical interests like you know, the funny hashtag, um, Silicon Valley, San Francisco. And you're seeing people use it. And the idea is to get a coherency around readability, searchability, discoverability around large scale group conversations. So who's, who's using it? Let me give us some examples. Um, IBM's using it, EMC's using it, Palo Alto Networks is using it. We have John McAfee who's coming out of the woodwork to use, he's gonna be on, t on Friday. We've got interest from people in Hollywood. We've got interest from TV shows. This is the beautiful thing. This is a crowd sourced, uh, free-for-all conversational with voting. You can vote on threads, you can vote in, in favor of things, you can like it, and the person who wins the most votes becomes the crowd captain, but it's not just on Twitter, it's on Facebook. We've seen people on Facebook use it, and people on LinkedIn use it. You sign in, it's a crowd platform, and, and like Danny says, that's a timeline for the crowd. So we're really excited, and we think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we have plans to bring it out on mobile, and you're going to see that in, in beta preview too, and then probably general availability shortly around you know the April, May time frame. 
Okay, so I wonder if we could uh, turn to the product a little bit, Danny. Uh, sure. John, you t talked about what it is. Can we can we actually see it? Um, yeah. So and, and maybe you can take us through kind of the the back end and the secret sauce behind it. Sure. So this is how it looks right now on the front end. Uh, this is a hashtag San Francisco. So you can see folks here like putting like Instagram pic. They are dragging some articles. So so last few weeks we have been. He, there has been a lot of talk about the Google Buzz and uh, the rent, and people uh, people have been like uh, putting stuff here because there's no other single place to where they can find all the important things about a hashtag. So that's one example, and other one that's like always on chat, wherein we are reinventing the way people communicate on forums. Forums forums have been not reinvented since like 1990s. It's one important part of the group communication <coughs> which you focus on. The other one is Reddit style AMAs. You can see here, ask Palio to networks, ask Brian. Like he's 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 a great guy from EMC. There are, there may be like ton of people who want to ask questions to him. Uh, where do they go? So how's it work? So you have a, a chat scheduled for Thursday, February thirteenth, uh, with Brian. Ask Brian. Brian Gallagher, who's the president of EMC's largest division. So. He's going to be available. That is right. In the chat. Yep. Uh, and so, what happens at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time? What happens? So, 11 a.m. Pacific time, the comment boxes and everything opens up, and people can ask questions. The uh, all the comments and all the um, updates go to their ch social network of choice, and it's fully opt-in. So we don't spam anyone. It's like uh, perfect for people who like want to talk like one or two things using their timeline and then want to ask like further more questions or interact without spamming their timeline. So it's like network, uh, like it's highly good for a social network. I think John and it's all around a hashtag. Yeah, yeah so, that's so, right. so here's the thing. That, so there's two things that's going on that we're really tapping into that I'm excited about. And again, I haven't been this excited in a long, long time since the early days of the web. The, the trend from moving from static to dynamic is really what the crowd is all about. Comments and all these forums are, are statically aligned with something, a blog post, a site, you know, whatever. What the hashtag has done in the social crowd is created a dynamic environment. Now the problem that that creates and the opportunity that we are going after is that it's an opportunity to unify, Dave, to unify the crowd to create action. And that action could be selling a product, educating someone in a multi-massive online courseware situation. It could be an executive using their one hour of their time to have an ask me anything town hall-like experience. The bottom line is it takes advantage of the dynamic nature of social, the unification around the hashtag for distribution and discovery, and more importantly, in social media, people talk about wasting time. This makes use of time. Yeah. This allows an individual to spend an hour with a group and create amazing oxygen of content. So and can that we see is a one? real can value we see proposition. One that's, that's actually, you know, you've, you've, so you showed us uh, some scheduled yeah, one. Can so you, this is a scheduled one, yeah, with the video. So we have like different kinds of Can you pull up chat. one that's already taken place, or can we see what it looks like? You yeah, know, of course, yeah. I can put one which is like live right now. Uh, so let's go to Big Data SV, I think. It's a, uh, it's a chat which is uh, using this hashtag. And you hear, here is what you can see. Like rich media content, uh, some of the content from Greg, John. Okay, the other one is, which is live is, let's say, news around Stanford, hashtag funny. Okay, so what I was looking at before, it looks like it was a threaded conversation, right? So it's that kind, is of, right. kind of quarrel, like, okay, now I'm seeing... Like, a lot, <laughs> lot, lot of funny stuff. It's not safe for work, so I don't want to go. <laughs> so it's, it's like group communication for all sorts of people. I can show you some transcripts, transcript also. Once it is done, how it looks like. Here is a popular one from IBM. So this is how it looks like. Here, yourself, Dave. So you are, you are thread and Tom Pearson. It looks beautiful to read. So Twitter is like a stream of updates which gets lost. I would tell you, like this is from three months ago, right? Can you find an update which is relevant for a hashtag which is like months ago? No, nowhere on like Twitter. And what kind of metrics do you get here? What, do, you, do you share like how many people come into the crowd? Share that is right, like that? yeah. We, we have, for the social media managers, we do a lot of like automation. Well, it is like, we share like the number of views, reach, posts, that is like available for everyone. And then when you go to like analytics, which I can show you by signing in. Okay, so John, the idea here is that we've got this threaded conversation and what happens after the chat ends? 
So the beautiful thing about this is it's on the record transcripts. You can see how the chat actually evolved naturally in sequential order. And also because of the voting mechanics, the top vote goes to the top. So it's also very, very imp uh, readable and it's just a filter built in by the crowd. So there's kind of a crowd mechanics that allows for some filtering. What is also important is the notion of pull quotes. For instance, you, each cluster that's grouped together has its own permalink. So someone can say, hey, I'm only interested in this conversation. So, you know, on data economy, which was months ago, I'm going to retweet on my, on my timeline right now. I just retweeted. So if you go to my Twitter handle, uh, twitter.com slash furry, you'll see, Danny, I'm showing that, and you'll see what I just retweeted. That's very relevant to the conversation happening right now at Big Data SV. And that is, so organizations are really changing to become data driven, or is this a bunch of lip service by Dave Vellante? I retweeted that from November 20th, and if you look at the, the Twitter card, it's bylined by Dave Vellante with the question of the thread that had multiple engagements on there. This is an example of crowd activated innovation on-demand content, retweetable. People can go back and look at it and in interact with it. This is gravity, this is the use of data. This is knowledge that's been captured and is actionable. This is the ultimate uh, holy grail experience in our opinion that generates from the crowd that is unharnessed in the past. So we are super excited for educational platforms, for marketing folks, for nonprofits, for businesses, for communities. Yeah. So, Danny, so, you're just showing us something there. Yeah, the right? analytics. So, uh, so I just exactly. logged in into my chat, and uh, I have an analytics for a lot of chats, which uh, I participated. And this is free for all the hosts. So any company manager out there who is like right now struggling to do multiple things, uh, uh, writing a blog post about her tweet chat, and then trying to garner the people, and then doing Storyfy uh, of like important comments, and then trying to get analytics from another service. We have a fully boxed solution and a completely automated process. So they just go here, they pick a hashtag, they do their chats just like, it works as, as good as like tweet chat. The only, re only difference is it's much better. It has like threading, it has a coherent way of like preserving the transcript and you can embed the transcript and more importantly, it gives you free analytics. It's not, it's not ephemeral, it just doesn't disappear in That's the tweet right. stream. Now what's this running on? This is running totally on Amazon. We have no bare metal servers, everything on Amazon, Elastic Beanstalk, uh, which is like a full stack uh, which Amazon provides and it's beautiful that it is fully automated. Uh, you don't even need, so actually it replaces DevOps a little bit. So we don't have any DevOps. Re the reason is Amazon has does, uh, done all the groundwork. So all we have is like software engineers and Git repository. We like push the code to Git and it goes to Amazon. The Amazon servers download the code. They run some bunch of testers, which we actually like uh, tell them what sort of unit has, and then they deploy it on all the machines. And they even do rolling upgrades, which is if you have like 10 machines, one machine uh, has, gets a new code and they replace the machine. So your site is always up. So you're confident this thing will scale? If this thing like scales. We have creamed by yeah. a bunch of teenagers. <laughs> um, yeah. So John, what, talk about the, the roadmap. What's, uh, what's the future look like? What's next? Well, right now we're in public beta one, which is invite only. You can request a beta. We're letting folks in who are using it and we're getting good working experience from that. Um, we're really excited. This is a big idea. It's already validated certainly in the enterprise space. The B2B market loves it. We're seeing great traction there, great uptake. Uh, we're doubling down on that as kind of an enterprise advanced analytics opportunity. But we're going for the big idea for the whole world. We want to bring this out at a very large scale. Uh, we're talking to some VC firms. There's some interest in investing. We'll be looking for a Series A financing in a few months, and there's some interested parties. But we're looking for a partner that can help us make this a global big idea and, and make it a reality. Um, we've made a lot of progress technically in the back end on the business model innovation, on the use, user, user experience. Right now, just put some polish on it. So we've made a lot of progress. A lot of features under the hood, a lot of intellectual property that's defensible, certainly from a proprietary standpoint, uh, patents, et cetera. So we're super excited. It's, you know, data science meets uh, interaction, meets the crowd, and, we, and we're, we're really super excited. How big's the team? So right now we have six, seven people, and we're looking for some uh, additional folks on the UI side, user experience, and obviously mobile. Obviously mobile first is key for us as well, but we want to nail this on the web, uh, and we got all the wire wires together on all the products. We're super excited. 
Um, great testing on the back end. And again, this is a lot. We've done a lot and, and, and very capital efficient. These are six so. or seven people that are full time? On, full time, on this yeah, right. full time. And, uh, you know, we're running like the wind. We're pushing more code to Git, GitHub, and we're watching the, the QA kick in. And again, the, a lot of the hard work is done. And really what we're most excited about is the user experience that we've had with our customers so far. Uh, everyone loves it. It's total democratization. It allows yeah. for voices. It allows for ideas yeah. and action. We, we have just broken all the walls. So you don't have to like sit with your static networks of 500 friends on Facebook or 200 friends on LinkedIn. That's not the end of your world. You can, <laughs> the, the, we, we, with hashtags, we are actually breaking those walls so that you can meet new people. So the networks are Twitter, Facebook, and, and LinkedIn? Yeah. I'm hearing that yeah. correctly? So we are soon to be Google Plus. So in that way, like we, we connect the hashtags across all social networks. And, and what, what about uh, one other company question? Are you guys hiring right now? Or yeah, we're right? hiring uh, looking for? A UX engineers. We're looking for community managers, some data scientists. But right now, the number one focus is uh, user experience engineers and getting the mobile version yeah. out the door. And uh, we're, you know, we're pushing that. So we, have, uh, so we have a fully responsive core right now. But even then, we are getting feedback that they want Want, people want like native mobile apps. So mobile engineers out there, UX designers. So we this is the first drive of the product. Even then, it looks usable and good. We don't have any UX guys. Yeah. This is built just by backend oh, okay. engineers. I mean, I mean, there's some real, <laughs> there's some real computer science involved, yeah. and this looks like kind of an easy yes. thing, but it's really not. We talk about a lot, this large scale, real time, interactive, a lot of engagement, a lot of crowd behavior, interaction, experience. Uh, it's really awesome. Yeah, and a lot of, lot of API things, like di different networks have different kinds of API. If you see in one thread, you will find a person from LinkedIn, another person from Facebook, and another from, person from Twitter, and they all look like one cohesive conversation. So what about the, uh, so this all looks great, what about the business model, can you talk about that? Yeah, so right now we are so excited about, and this is something that Dean and I have agreed upon, that we are so passionate about, is because of the preview one data we got from our, our current batch of users, we're gonna open it up for free for everyone to use with the free analytics, the baseline analytics, because we, it's helping people, and, and this is, we're finding the tooling needed in the social web is a lot like the web in the 94, 95 time frame. We're helping people eliminate uh, things that are manual mundane tasks. So this is good tooling and it's free for any community manager. It's gonna be free for anyone who wants to host a chat. This will be a freemium model. We will make money in the short term right now by selling an enterprise edition for advanced analytics. Data modeling, some data science that we have. We do have some proprietary technology around affinity ranking and so on and so forth. Um, but again, that's gonna be more on to keep things going, but right now we have enough capital efficiency and leverage in the back end that it's very capital efficient to operate and we're excited to bring it out and we're gonna offer it free. In preview two, you're gonna see rich interactive media, embeds of videos, embeds of photos, and some coolness around the features of the user experience and then ultimately general availability. Does it work on mobile? Yeah, it works it on mobile, work fully on responsive mobile. design. Again, we, we, a mobile app is in the works, but it's, that's a hard problem as well. So one hard problem done on the back end, Right uh, now, it works on all devices. Mm -hmm. You can like post updates, you can read, uh, but yeah, like a native mobile app is uh, much faster. So, so some of the companies you mentioned, I'm, I'm like, my question was, is it, you know, is this how stable is it? But you're, you're talking about IBM, EMC using it, CSC. Yeah, that's so right. It's, it's pretty stable. Guys, it's rock or, solid on the back end. Uh, we can like scale up to like hundreds of users concurrently for every chat. Um, and that, that, those kind of scalability problems are solved. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, we, we are like working more towards the UX. Like, how, the a, person, a person who is coming onto this side should, should be off and running within like few seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this, we're getting some feedback from folks that are being very candid about the yeah. UX in some areas on, on mobile, for instance. We're going to fix that. But I will tell you, Dave, what's the most exciting is that everyone who's used CrowdChat has, has come, come back. back. And we have a yeah. lot of repeat yeah. usage, yeah. and that's a key metric for us. So we're super excited by that. That to us is validation, which is why we're opening yeah. it up for everyone to use. Uh, and that's our big idea. We're super excited. Yeah. So what are, what are the critical success factors that we should be watching? Um, right now, core users, those community managers, folks who have the need now, folks doing tweet chats, for instance, find that using hashtags to organize groups uh, in, in, in somewhat structured ways working. This is a home run for them. If you're using tweet chats, you should move to crowd chats immediately. It gets storified instantly with the algorithmic transcript, uh, provides automation. So if you're doing a tweet chat today, that market, we, we, we see about 5,000 people doing tweet chats uh, probably on a daily basis, roughly, give or take, and that's growing. So people who are doing group conversations, can have some coherency in that automation, so that's one market. We see it going into kind of the, the power law curve of, you know, in the long tail for point conversations, distinct user groups, moving up into the mainstream, TV shows, movies, uh, celebrities, and, and so on. 
All right, Danny Ryan, John Furrier, thanks very much. Good luck thanks, and Steve. congratulations on all the all the progress. Check out crowdchat.net and uh, we'll be right back with our next next guest. This is the Cube. We're live from Silicon Valley. <laughs>